subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. The Note 9 over the iPhone XS Max. Now, one thing I want to mention before we get this video started is that I paid for both of these phones full retail value of both. They're unlocked devices. This is not carrier subsidies. I paid for these full blown cash 512 gig model over here. And on this one, this is a 256 gigabyte model iPhone XS Max. Neither phone was sent by either company. So this is not a paid for review. If you want to say that it's totally false. So don't believe anybody who's saying that up in the comments just because they're mad that I picked one over the other and such. It's my totally my subjective experience from my perspective. Now, if you want to see a more objective review, I encourage you to watch my Should You Buy iPhone XS Max versus Note 9, where I try to give both of them props for all of their great areas and great additions and features that come to both of these devices. But this one, I want to share my personal take on why I'm choosing the Note 9 over the XS Max. The first reason has to do with the battery life. So getting into the battery section, after actually using these in heavy use and testing it on my battery drain test for an actual scientific test, the Note 9 actually lasts longer than the 10s Max, specifically in heavy use. I don't go back on what I said about the standby. The standby time is still better on the 10s Max, but in heavy use, I find the Note 9 to be better in battery life when you're actually using the device. So that's the first reason why I'm choosing it over the 10s Max. The second reason is Siri versus Google Assistant. Now this has to do mostly with Android versus iOS, but the Google Assistant is so much better to me on the Note 9 than Siri. It just, every time I ask Siri a question, I don't know what I'm gonna get from it. Whereas with the Note 9, I always get the correct answer. It's not always accurate for the iPhone, whereas on the Google Assistant for the Note 9, I get the answers I want almost every time. So I really do enjoy having that. That's more of a Google thing, but still it's on the Note 9, even though it has a Samsung experience. Now I wanna touch a little bit on design. I do think the 10s Max has a more pretty, more beautiful looking design than the Note 9. It's more squared and a little bit more boxy, but the Note 9 is almost as premium. The only thing that gives the 10s Max a little more premium over the Note 9 is them stainless steel sides, which I do appreciate. It's almost as premium but offers me all these other features and the next feature it offers that still matters to me and I think a lot of other content creators is the headphone jack now as a consumer you might be over this you might have bought consumer based bluetooth headphones from the likes of bose sony or other companies sennheiser for example maybe even some off brands you might have bought some bluetooth headphones so this might not matter to you anymore but to me as somebody who plugs my audio and i need crisp audio from a headphone jack which still most professionals do use they plug it into their macs or macbook pros and they hear really crisp audio on phone headphones like the audio technica m50x's m40x phones headphones like that we still like to plug it in and then come over here on the note and just plug it in here and then you could just listen to your video back in the full audio. So the next reason is the fast charging abilities of the Note 9. With this USB-C universal port, it fast charges extremely fast and I've actually cross charged it with some other devices. I know you're not supposed to do this, but the LG G7 ThinQ charger actually fast charges this phone as well as I think they're using basically the same type of charger. The Samsung charger, faster than the iPhone charger by miles. The iPad charger that I use for the iPhone XS Max is the one from my iPad Pro. It doesn't actually even charge this phone as fast as the Note 9. I really hope Apple brings fast charging next year. If you're listening, stop avoiding this. You know you can put it in the box. You're charging more than Samsung and you have a similar reach in terms of, you know, you can sell to a mini amount of people. You know you can do it, so do it already. Put a fast charger in that box. Next up is the display. Now, the display is obviously very close as Samsung manufactures both of these panels. Some people keep saying, no, LG does. No, Samsung manufactures a lot of them. LG manufactures some of them. But this one I got was a Samsung panel. Both of these are very good quality panels, and you're not going to notice much of a difference between either, except for the more vibrant colors you get on the Note 9 versus the more muted, more, I would say, toned down natural colors of the 10 s max but why i prefer this display is because of the wqhd resolution if we go into settings i go into display i really like that i have the super high wqhd plus resolution on here 1440p and also in settings you have the video enhancer mode which actually does enhance video i watched a netflix video the other day on here 
and it was extremely bright and beautiful when you do enter YouTube or a video application. So watching videos on here with no cutout also really nice. You can watch it in the full screen and I feel like it gives you more of that full screen kind of feel over the canvas on the iPhone XS Max. Next up is the call quality and connectivity has been vastly superior for my Note 9. My call quality, I don't know, callers and you know voice calls just sound better to me on the Note 9. It also has a volume booster mode. While you are talking, you can click this little button and it'll give you extra volume in the earpiece. In addition to that, the LTE speeds have been blazing fast on a Note 9. On the iPhone XS Max, they've also been fast. I wouldn't call them blazing fast, though. I've had some LTE connectivity drops here for the XS Max more often than the Galaxy Note 9. So in terms of connectivity and calling, I think that the Samsung is superior to this iPhone XS Max just based on my experience alone. I've had more drop calls on this phone. I actually never had a single drop call for the Note 9 yet. So to me, it's the winner there in call quality and LTE connectivity. Next up is the superior multitasking. As a matter of fact, there's no multitasking on the iPhone XS Max. And where the multitasking is even better on a Samsung phone is you have the app list, which you don't always have as many access to as many apps on other Android devices, but not only this type of multitasking, but you have pop view, something you can't do on other Android phones. And that allows you to pop a little window. So you can see this little menu right here of settings. You can have a bunch of these little applications like this. And if you change the DPI settings and make the screen smaller, you will have even more space to move more applications around. In addition to having that there, you can continue to pop more applications well if they are supported let's go over here to samsung internet you continue to pop more applications in there and you can see it just gets really in depth when it comes to multitasking in addition to that the s pen is an indispensable tool to me as i do write my video ideas as they spontaneously come about and i schedule out my videos like today for example it's 10 21 2018 i said i need a video out by 2 p.m so i wrote this down i swipe over and i remember that it's there what you write down gets done and the fact that i can write things down on this phone that's always with me anyway is indispensable for me and also very useful for artistic people who want to draw in adobe sketch and many of those applications now the iphone does have some superior sketching apps but they don't have a pen on this phone so you can't do as much with your finger on drawing as you can with the S Pen. Next up is USB-C is a universal feature. You can have a charger from an old phone. If you lose your Samsung charger, USB-C still will work with this device, albeit sometimes it might not fast charge, but you can still charge the device. And if you've had an Android before, you likely already have a USB cable laying, a USB-C cable laying around, whereas you have this proprietary lightning port for the iPhone XS Max. If you had iPhones before, you likely have one of those, but the fact of the matter is this is universal, cross-platform, cross-manufacturer, like LG phones have them, like Huawei phones have them, like any other Google phone has them, basically all Android phones have them. So it's a universal thing. That's what I like about the Note 9 as well and why I would choose it over the XS Max. Even Apple has USB-C on their MacBooks. So that's a great feature. It's a universal thing. And I think eventually iPhones will adopt them. They're just not there yet. So next up is the Note 9 just offers more on the go as an all in one. I mean, you could plug a mouse into this device and you could just start running through it. Like it does have a little arrow, just like a computer. You can plug a keyboard into this device. You can prop it up and you can start typing on that keyboard. You can do that with the XS Max 2 as well with a Bluetooth keyboard. But the Note 9 can really just function as a full blown computer. You can go ahead and auto rotate. Now, I'm not saying you could do like, you know, Adobe, you know, Premiere Pro and stuff on here. You're not going to do that. But I'm saying you can really get almost a desktop like experience, even more so than an iPad. I feel like you can get more of a desktop experience by plugging this in the Samsung DeX than you can on, say, an iPad, which is supposed to be like an in-between between an iPhone and a MacBook. But this is even more functional than an iPad if you plug it into Samsung DeX and run it up to a monitor. It's a real, like, kind of laptop experience from your mobile smartphone. And it definitely has the power to run DeX very smoothly. So I actually use DeX. I have a DeX right here. And the experience is great. Um, a lot of applications don't work in DeX mode, but the ones you basically will need, the browser, YouTube, messaging, all that stuff is optimized for the device. Finally, I want to get on to promotions and prices of this phone. I mean, this phone is much cheaper than the XS Max, especially with the deal Samsung puts out, like the $600 trade-in deal. You could trade in your phone and get this significantly less. So I think this also makes this phone much more accessible to users. There's more subsidies on this phone. 
Throughout the year, the Note 9 is going to drop and drop and have more promotions than an iPhone XS Max ever will. You're going to continue for the whole year to pay full retail for that Apple branded logo for that Apple smartphone. So the price is one of the huge reasons why I would recommend consumers pick Note 9 over XS Max just because you get everything. There's like nothing you're missing from a Note 9 on the XS Max besides an Apple logo. Or, you know, if you need, if you really need iMessage or FaceTime, that could be a seller and definitely keep you off the Note 9. But if you can deal without those things, hardware wise, this thing has everything the iPhone XS Max gives you. In conclusion, I'm picking the Note 9 because of its vast productivity and creative features it offers over the XS Max. But I do want to mention the XS Max feels like a luxury piece of tech. Like you're buying into the brand more than you're buying into functionality because it feels no different in real world use than like the other nine iPhones before it besides the gesture system that's new. But the core iOS experience is still a grid of icons. It doesn't really do much else. I can change my icons around. I still have them blocking my wallpaper so I can't see my full wallpaper kind of like here. There's so much wallpaper I can see on this device. It still limits me too much for me to pick it over something like the Note 9. But I do want to mention I'm coming from the perspective of a content creator. And I really think that if you don't use the features that the Note 9 offers. Like if you don't find yourself needing multitasking, you just wanna go on one app at a time, you like a more simple experience, and you're not actually gonna take advantage of what this phone offers, it's definitely not worth the price to buy a Note 9. You definitely will be much better off buying an iPhone XS Max, even though it's a little more. If that simplistic feeling and iPhone experience you're used to is what you're after, this is the best iPhone ever, I feel. But it limits my productivity and my creativity too much when I'm on the go, especially and I come up with ideas, I have my S Pen and stuff like that. I just get more done than the iPhone XS Max on the Note 9. So. So at the end of the day, this could basically be the work phone or the business phone and the iPhone XS Max could be the go out on the night, the date night kind of phone, if you know what I'm trying to say. That's it. That's why I'm choosing the Note 9 over the XS Max. Like I say, if you want to see a more in-depth spec kind of video where I talk about, you know, all the, you know, inner workings of these two phones and, you know, all the details and stuff like that. This was more of my opinion, my subjective take. Go check out my should you buy the iPhone XS Max versus the Galaxy Note 9 link down below. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, and for me, I know a lot of people are still trying to decide between these two. Hit that thumbs up for me. Nick helping you to master your technology. I got Pixel 3 XL content coming as well as iPhone 